What's up, my fellow survival dispatchios? I'm Bear with BearIndependent.com and the YouTube channel, Bear Independent, where we have the best content with the worst production quality. We'd love it if you'd come join us over there, as well as go ahead and hit the subscribe button here at Survival Dispatch. There's a bunch of great content here. Today, we're talking about common dog breeds for security. And I'm going to go ahead and put a disclaimer in here right now. I don't want to hear any whining. I don't want, well, Barry, you should have said that. Cool, shoot a video and let me know. We could fight about it later. We're gonna go over several different dog breeds today. And none of these breeds, none of these breeds will be effective at the things we're going to discuss unless you take the time to train them. Unless you take the time to train them them i hear all the time well my dog is this breed and he has these inherent skills and blah 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 negative your rifle doesn't work if you don't zero it you can't actually bug out if you haven't broken your boots in and put the rucksack on your back and gone for a hike i don't know every other day for the last five years or so sorry got a little defensive there your dog may have inherent skills but if he doesn't have training he's not going to rise to your level of expectation in an emergency going to fall to his level of training which if he has none is none okay disclaimer added dogs can be a great additional layer of security for your home and for your person the key word is additional an animal will never replace a firearm or self-defense skills and if you live in a bad area it would be better to move if possible than have a badass dog Lots of people get hung up on the more exotic, meaning expensive and hard to find dog breeds that look the most intimidating and seem the most cool. Here's a more practical list of some more common breeds best for various needs and situations. Uh, urban situations, you should move, seriously. You're preparing for a systemic collapse or financial collapse or supply chain issues, or civil unrest, or scarcity of food, or economic crisis, or um, civil uh, disobedience, we'll just use that, or tyrannical governments, or Panamanian paratroopers, and you still live in the city? You should move, seriously, that's all. There are no dog breeds for you, move, next. Suburban, uh, watchdogs, AKA four-footed alarm systems. These are dogs that don't stop bad guys, but they can draw a lot of attention to what the bad guy's doing. Get a smaller, healthy dog, and it will save a lot of money on dog food, vet bills, and so forth. Quiet breeds like whippets don't fit the bill here, so aim for a dog that barks, but please teach it how to stop barking. Training. Well, he's a good dog, but no, he's a good dog, or he's a bad dog. Yeah, how do I know this? Had dogs my whole life. Have an awesome dog right now that we'll get to in a moment. You should have a dog that barks when there's a threat, but you need to be able to, on command, make that dog stop barking. Boston Terriers, popular choice due to that gentlemanly personality. Unlike most, these dogs are usually quiet, but will bark when something is wrong. They can have some health problems though. Uh, Chihuahua. <laughs> One of the most hated terrors on God's green earth. <laughs> also one of the healthiest, most long-limbed breeds that you could possibly pick. A miniature schnauzer. These dogs boast abnormally sharp hearing and are the bane of vermin. Toy poodles, yes, that's right. Bear's talking about toy poodles. They're very trainable, they're low shedding, and that's easy, easier on allergy sufferers. There's not a bunch of hair all over the place and dander and blah, blah, blah. And then a rescue mutt. Most smaller yappers will do the trick, find one with a personality and energy level that fits your family. Now, intimidators. Now there's three categories here. Alarm systems, intimidators, and guard dogs slash man stoppers. So those were alarm systems. Boston Terriers, Chihuahuas, Miniature Schnauzers, Toy Poodles, and or a small rescue mutt. Intimidators or visual deterrents. Dogs in this category are like watchdogs on steroids. They may not come to your aid in a crisis, but they look the part, which may be enough to cause a would-be attacker to move on. 
Large dogs with deep barks, particularly dark colored dogs, do the job best. Pricked or cropped ears are favorable. How could you do that? Simmer down, bro. I'm not saying eat the damn thing. Pricked or cropped ears are favorable, and bully breeds tend to have an intimidating reputation. Again, a rescue from a shelter could fill this role. Guard dogs or man stoppers. These dogs are meant to buy you time, not solve your problems for you. Repeat, these dogs are meant to buy you time, not solve your problems for you. They require diligent training and socialization to be effective and not be a liability. Let me repeat that again. They require diligent training and socialization to be effective and not be a liability. If you have the time, energy, and money to invest, and it is an investment, into these dogs, they are the next logical step in protection. Here's some more common breeds that can back you up in a dire situation. Bull Mastiffs, had one of those one time. They're lazy, they're slobberby, slobberly, slobbery. They, they're slobs. They got stuff that hangs out of their face, all oh, yeah, they're slobs. Uh, until they're not. When something goes wrong, a Bull Mastiff will let you know something's going wrong. They require much less exercise than other breeds on this list, and they tend to protect the home even in the absence of an owner. They are, however, very stubborn. Doberman Pinschers, they're the only dog breed specifically for protection. A great visual deterrent as they're also very recognizable when their ears have been cropped, and Hollywood has made a reputation for these animals as being scary. So you got that going for you as well. They're clingy, but relatively clean dogs due to their short hair. Single layered coat they've got on them as well, versus my dog, which has a double, double layered coat, which we'll talk about in a minute. German Shepherds, which is a popular choice. Uh, training for these dogs need, you have to train all dogs, but especially these dogs to know what to do in a crisis. They're excellent learners, but again, you fall to your level of training, not you, you don't rise to your level of expectation. Uh, they are very trainable, they're common in the United States, and the best students within this breed often obtain positions within the police force. This is a herding breed, you know, for herding animals, so forth and so on. I mean, shepherd is in their name. Uh, however, they are prone to hip dysplasia, and they usually shed quite a bit. Giant schnauzers, as versus the miniature schnauzer. A giant schnauzer has more drive than the little dogs, and a lot of other dogs its size. They're descended from solid all-around farm dogs. They regard taking their charges seriously and they have low shedding. And then lastly in this category, Rottweilers. They're another recognizable guard dog, air quote guard dog. They were bred to be drovers, but today they're more often used in search and rescue and as a protective yet affectionate home companion. That's suburban-ish type dog breeds. Now let's talk about rural. Livestock guardian dogs. And again, just because your dog has XYZ bloodline doesn't mean it's anything, especially if it's livestock guardian dogs we're talking about. There's a great group called Fairy, I believe is how it's pronounced, but it's F-A-R-A-I, Livestock Guardian Dog Training. And it's what we used on our dog, whose name is Sam. He's an Anatolian Pyrenees mix. Uh, his head is bigger than a basketball. He weighs 120 pounds. We call him affectionately our murder dog because he kills things that aren't supposed to be here. He very much so protects our livestock and he comes from a great bloodline, but he had to be trained. And so we use that fairy, F-A-R-A-I, livestock guardian dog training and it damn near a miracle. So they have inherent skills, talents, abilities, but you have to train them to recognize that you are the boss, not them. And that they serve you, not the other way around. And that these animals that they're protecting, that is their job to protect them. And that certain animals are supposed to be on this side of the fence, inside of the corral, inside of the pen. They stay there. These other animals that show up are not supposed to be here. When another dog shows up, that's not your buddy, that's a potential threat. And our dog has straight up murdered a bunch of coyotes, and raccoons, and armadillos, and possums, and snakes, and feral cats, and I don't remember anything that's trying to eat the chickens, or the calves, or the sheep, or the turkeys, or the goats, or whatever, and he's got a bark on him, 
Oof, oof, oof. I've literally seen people stop dead in their tracks. So, livestock guardian dogs. These dogs are specifically for guarding your flocks, your herds, your property, and your family. Um, they do this thing called body blocking. When my youngest daughter was little, Sam would get in between her and any danger, which is beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. They are very independent, however. Let me restate. They are very independent and truly need to be in wide open spaces as they will wander and they will bark. And sometimes a lot, usually at night. If you live in a very rural area with a lot of predator pressure, like us, these are your co-workers. They oftentimes work great in pairs as well. And we have many a brother that have these types of dogs, Anatolian or Pyrenees or mixed, that they have two or three of them. And they do a great job working as a team. So because of that, it's recommended that you have more than one. Livestock guardian breeds available in the United States include the Akbash, Anatolian Shepherd, Caucasian Shepherd Dog, the Great Pyrenees, Commodore, the Marema Sheepdog, and others. Mixes between two or more of these breeds are not uncommon, including, like I said, we have an Anatolian Pyrenees mix, and he's a beast. I love him. I love it when he comes home in the morning after a night of work protecting this place, and he's covered in blood, none of it his. And then when I'm out doing the things, I find three or four dead coyotes. Good job, dog. Good job. Because you can definitely go hunt coyotes at night. It's a thing. I've done it. You know, I'd rather be asleep and let him go kill him. And uh, that's the other thing. you got to know your dog. They have different barks as well. Uh, he has a bark for, hey, come here. I need you to look at this. He has a bark for, hey, there's a thing right here we need to kill. He has a bark for, what's up? Right? <laughs> he's got all types of different barks and knowing what they mean that when you hear him or her operating can help you quite a bit in discerning what does my response to this need to be so a dog can be a great addition to your security protocol but again please remember it is not a substitute for personal training and responsibility dogs can be great early warning systems deterrence and even a help in crisis but they cannot replace a firearm and basic self-defense competency. They're not be-all, do-all. And they require training. The training you give to an emotional support animal, legitimate emotional support animals, or service dogs, is different than the training you give to livestock guardians, which is different than search and rescue dogs, which is different than you know your alarm system dogs. But they have to understand you're the boss, and they work for you. Thanks to Survival Dispatch for letting me play in their sandbox. Again, I'm Bear with BearIndependent.com and here on YouTube. And if you're new here to Survival Dispatch, go ahead and click the subscribe button, ring the little bell icon, and stick around because there's lots of great content creators here at Survival Dispatch. I appreciate y'all. Bear out.